A man from Southern California who tended to cosplay as the Yellow Power Ranger ended up falling for a fellow cosplayer, falling far too hard and going over the edge, resorting to something completely shocking and causing a major fire at an anime convention. I just want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Indel. Indel is a soundscape app backed by neuroscience patented technology that creates personalized audio experiences. It generates sounds that are designed to help your performance or to even just help you relax and focus. Let's just say that you're suffering from stress or anxiety or maybe even just being productive enough. Indel calms your mind to create feelings of comfort and safety. Indel will boost your productivity by helping you concentrate for longer periods of time, really helping you to get into that flow state and shut out all the other noise. If you're having trouble sleeping, or if you feel tired, or your sleeping quality just isn't good enough, then easy, just head over to the sleep section and find a soundscape that really clicks with you. Or maybe in the end you just need help finding that mental clarity to stay creative and productive. Indel can definitely back you up on that one too. You can even bring up more specific scenarios and generate sounds helpful for those certain situations, like reading, doing chores, working out, studying, and more. I'm the kind of person who always has to have some kind of noise playing in the background, whether it's a TV show I've seen a million times, or a podcast, or music, or even just a loud air conditioner. And Dell really helps to scratch that itch. It always has just the right sort of sound for just the right vibe. It's really easy to open up, get right to the point, and get listening. I think you'll be impressed with the results. The first 100 people to download Indel by clicking the link in the description below will get a free week of audio experiences, so go ahead and check it out, you got nothing to lose. Cosplay is something that's often seen as a fun and harmless way to pay homage to your favorite series while making new friends and engaging with your favorite communities. However, sometimes the fans and even other fellow cosplayers aren't really the best people. You may have seen all of the cosplay is not consent signs that are usually put up around various anime conventions. This is because a lot of people can't really seem to keep their hands to themselves when it comes to cosplayers. Point is, there are a lot of good people out there, but there are really some bad ones that you need to be more weary of, and that brings us to today's case. Matthew Masumi Toyotome was an amateur cosplayer from California. More than anything, it seemed he was into Power Rangers. He tended to dress up as the Yellow Ranger himself. A few years back, he ended up getting together with some other cosplayers in his area and collaborating on a YouTube series with them in around 2013, one based around Power Rangers that they would call Armored Rangers. According to some friends who have decided to stay anonymous for understandable reasons, Matthew fell head over heels for the woman in the role of the Pink Ranger, a woman named Julian, someone active in the cosplay community to this day. Matthew did not seem to care that Julia had been in a happy, committed relationship for quite some time now. While working on the series, his infatuation with Julia grew and grew. He tried making moves on her multiple times to no avail. When the YouTube series ended and the whole group parted ways, Julia decided to maintain an online presence on YouTube and other social media apps, mainly showing her cosplay. It seems that she became very well known within the Power Rangers community. However, despite going their separate ways, Matthew didn't forget about Julia at all. Nothing really changed about his obsession. He would continue to fawn over her for what eventually became years. While watching Julia achieve some success online, Matthew was conflicted. Not only was he stalking her, but he was also jealous of her newfound fame. Not sure what to do about his conflicted feelings, he did the only thing he could think of. Show up at her house uninvited, drop off gifts for her at her home, and follow her around when she went to conventions. Sometime during November of 2018, Julia found herself on the receiving end of yet another one of Matthew's love confessions. She yet again rejected him. At this point, it seems he had had enough. His pride was pretty damaged, and the two decided mutually to cut all contact with each other. Julia did her best to block Matthew on all forms of social media that she could think of. At some point, Likely during this episode, it seems that Julia even got a restraining order against Matthew. It seemed that things were finally over with him and she could go on to live a normal life again. For now. Cutting contact doesn't really do a whole lot when it comes to a stalker, as stalking is often one-sided. I'm sure you're well aware that, in a lot of stalking cases, the victim won't even know that they're being stalked. This is how Matthew tried to play things. 
He continued to stalk Julia from that point onward. Then, fast forward to July 13th of 2019. An anime convention was being held at the Ontario Convention Center, one called Anime Los Angeles. The convention was absolutely packed with guests, most of which were staying at the nearby Azure Hotel and Suites, which partnered with the con. Among the guests were Julia, doing her usual cosplay, her friends, and, unfortunately, Matthew Masumi Toyotome. Julia was dressed up in her pink Power Ranger getup, and, as you may assume, Matthew decided to drip himself out in his yellow Power Ranger uniform for old time's sake. Julia hadn't really heard anything from Matthew in quite some time now. She didn't know that he was going to be at the convention, but she also wasn't really surprised. He tended to just show up at any of them whenever he could. This time was odd and awkward, though, as it was the first one that they had both attended since cutting all contact with each other. I had not heard of anything he was doing since November of last year until this past weekend when I saw him at the con and avoided him, Julia posted online. What happened between the two at the convention has not been made clear. According to some online posts, Matthew once again approached Julia and begged her for a date, to which she promptly refused. However, according to other articles, nothing actually happened between the two and they didn't have any sort of interaction. Either way, Matthew went over the edge. Perhaps this was due to yet another rejection, or maybe it was just due to jealousy. Maybe he was simply just another deranged stalker who happened to like harassing his victim. It's kind of hard to say. Regardless, though, he lost it. Matthew made himself scarce until it got dark that evening. This was when he decided to make a move. A strange move that most people still don't understand. In this CCTV footage, you can see Matthew wandering around a parking lot, sparking up a cigarette. Looking pretty nonchalant, really. That is, until he turns his gaze toward the vehicles. The video then cuts and skips forward a bit. When it does, we can see that Matthew is now crouched in front of a vehicle toward the back of the shot. He fiddles around with the car for a few seconds until a flame erupts, shocking even him and causing him to jump backwards. From then, he takes off down the sidewalk. From that point, I can only assume that the brightness of the fire caused the night vision mode to switch back to daylight mode on the camera. Once it does, you can see that the car is absolutely engulfed in flames. It isn't limited to only that car, though. The flames actually continue down the curb a bit, causing damage to other cars nearby. Until, eventually, the other cars begin to catch flame as well. The flames went on to spread to seven other vehicles, burning them all to various degrees of scrap metal and charcoal. Fortunately, no people were harmed in the incident, and the nearby buildings never caught fire either. As you can assume, the main car set ablaze was that of Julia. The other cars were merely collateral damage due to the sloppy dealings of a deranged stalker. Firefighters arrived at the scene almost immediately, just nine minutes after it was reported. They were particularly panicking because initial reports stated that the fire had already spread to the hotel, although this wasn't true. Attendees from the con watched in awe as the firefighters fought to put out the flames. At the time, it wasn't really clear if they had actually evacuated or if they just happened to be there. According to one con attendee who was staying at the Azur Hotel, the employees and other hotel residents were pounding on doors, advising guests to leave their rooms and exit the hotel immediately. People were panicking because they thought it was an active shooter. The fire burst the tires, and the people thought that someone was shooting up the place, said the guest. More than the fire, the rumors of an active shooter nearby were apparently what really sent the hotel into a panic. People even started spreading to other nearby hotels, warning them of the rumors as well. After about five minutes, the firefighters had dealt with the fire. In the end, one life was lost. That of a landscaping tree. Jokes aside, what Matthew had done was despicable to say the least. He stalked a woman for years, harassing her all the way, and eventually set fire to seven different cars out of pure spite. Everyone was lucky that this was all the damage he did. If the fire really had spread to nearby buildings, lives could have been lost. Human lives. The police started putting the pieces together pretty quickly. It looks like one vehicle was targeted and a couple of cars next to it were burned, said the Ontario Police Lieutenant David McBride. He poured gasoline onto a vehicle in the parking lot and then lit it on fire. The gasoline spread to six other vehicles, engulfing them in flames before the Ontario Fire Department was able to extinguish the fire. Police started going over the evidence, mainly the nearby security camera videos, like our little bit of CCTV right here. This video really was the smoking gun. Eventually, Julia herself and her boyfriend came to see the security footage. 
It's likely that they were asked if they knew the man on the tape, given that Julia's car was the initial target. They sure did, realizing that this was Matthew in an instant. In the end, who else would it have been? I had not heard of anything he was doing until this past weekend when I saw him at the convention and then learned that he was the one who set my car on fire, Julia posted. 27-year-old Matthew Masumi Toyotome immediately became the prime suspect in this case. Well, the only suspect, really. It seems that he simply went home after the incident. The police promptly drove over to his house and knocked on the door and arrested him without incident. He was booked into the West Valley Detention Center that night on suspicion of arson and suspicion of stalking. He intentionally lit her car on fire, said Lt. William Russell with the Ontario Police Department. They were both attending the anime convention. He did indicate that they are involved in cosplay together. Matthew neglected to mention that they had not been involved for years, actually. Julia, now without a car, set up a GoFundMe page to try to recuperate the cost of her vehicle, which was obviously toast at this point. Not only did she lose her car, but she had a lot of items inside of considerable value that were a complete loss as well. For those who haven't seen or heard yet, my car was set on fire while I was attending Anime Los Angeles. My car was specifically targeted and attacked by an obsessed stalker, she wrote, posting pictures of her demolished vehicle. Matthew's bail was set, but the dollar figure differs depending on which source you look at. It was set at anything from $250,000 to a whopping $1 million. Court records, though, seem to indicate that the $250,000 figure was more accurate. Matthew was left to rot, awaiting his sentencing. Julia expressed gratitude to other convention attendees for the support that they gave her throughout the ordeal. Matthew went on to plead not guilty to all 10 charges against him. One charge of stalking, seven charges of arson, and two charges of stalking while under a temporary restraining order. A few months into the whole ordeal, there was a hearing set to assess his mental state. After a good number of preliminary hearings, Matthew eventually entered into a plea agreement with the prosecutor. He pled no contest to one count of arson and two counts of stalking under a temporary restraining order. It looked like he was set to get probation in May of 2020. As of October 2021, it seems that all of Matthew's records were wiped online, leaving only screenshots, meaning that the records were most likely sealed by the court. Some users online claim to have found records that he was released from jail in February of 2021. It seems that now our boy is back on the prowl. Keep a lookout. Once again, thank you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. If you found the video interesting, uh, please give it a like. It really helps out with the algorithm and gets it seen by other people. And if you find content like this interesting, feel free to subscribe. I talk about it pretty much every week. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media. I mean, if anything would ever happen to this channel, that would be the only place you'd ever hear about it. You know how YouTube is when it comes to darker content. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account where you can see videos early, uncensored, and ad-free, which I keep linked down in the description below. And speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We have Emma S, Lex Luther, Starfade, JB Funk, Grack, Salad, Kevin, AMCMT, Marianne McCurdy, Jewel G, Wafrans, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, David McLaughlin, Marsh, Buffazerk, Jewel Movchan, Winnicott, Adrian Lawley, Kim Peak, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Main, Foxlicity, Jackie, Jules Latona, Tang, Sash Johnson, Rick from Work in Progress USA, and Buttery Frankis. You are all incredible. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you, and good night.